It feels really, really good to be back. And this season's bigger and more explosive and more exciting in many ways. You've got to be tough on Doctor Who. Each episode is incredibly different to the last one. And they've got to be really good at all genres, really. He's born to make Doctor Who, Jamie, and we've held him very tight this year. <laughs> So planning for a, an individual episode is just down to the, the brilliance of, of, uh, of Chris and the script team. And then the directors who bring a huge amount uh, to each episode. Mainly the thing is people who love genre, love the show, want to give it a go, are, are not daunted by the scale or the madness. Good idea, do it it now. The multiplicity of ideas or strands or monsters or effects, it's a, it's a big ask, you know, for directors. We've been blessed with our directors this year. Obviously the, um, the brilliant Jamie Magnus Stone, who's returning from uh, his triumph last year. The scripts have become, if anything, more ambitious. Um, there's lots of action set pieces. There seems to be more stuff taking place on far-flung planets and, um, and kind of out in deep space, which, which I love, but also is, uh, can sometimes be a little technically fiddly to, to do. He's got so much energy. He bounds in at 110% every day. He's a huge fan of the genre, and that's always really helpful for us. It's always really lovely to work with people that are passionate and want to be here. How can we breathe? Protective air bubble. John's been great. It somehow feels like he's always been here, and he was, in my mind, he was here last year too. He's just, he's, he's fitted in so well with the rest of the team and with the crew. Doctor, Doctor, Dan! Hi, Doc! I thought it would be fun to actually fire John and Carvinista down a down a tube. Get down there! Hurry up! We were trying to figure out how to do it. We were actually filming in some docks and there was these large tubes lying around and so I went and climbed into one of these tubes and thought, oh right, yeah, this would this would work. I'm sure we could just kind of like zip him down down these somehow. And Nicky Wilson, the producer, actually suggested why not put him on a skateboard at least. We kind of fabricated this sort of homemade skateboard and before we knew it we were pulling John Bishop down a tube at high speed. What did you do this afternoon, Dad? Well, I got dragged along on a cart through a tube, screaming like I was about to dive into the mazy. We've had some of the biggest sets that we've ever uh, shot on. Um, my favourite one there being the Temple of Atropos. A gorgeous big stone space with marble and broken down bits of bits of architecture and masonry and water to get these lovely kind of caustic water ripples all over the, all over the walls and it just feels like it's been there forever. Mary Seacole's British Hotel that Daft built was fantastic. The interior was beautiful. I just wanted to move in and live there. You are most welcome to the British Hotel. I was really pleased that I got to do some historical stuff this year because I was slightly jealous of the directors that got historicals last year. Crimea War is just a fascinating period to kind of be dropped into for an episode. It's just wonderful to have an excuse to jump in and research the period and see what the costumes were like back then and how the soldiers lived and of what the Crimean War was actually like and how, how sort of squalid it was. What I really like about Jamie is he really knows what's going on. So if sometimes you're a little bit confused as to the storyline or the history of something, even if you've done your research, Jamie always knows. He brings really amazing ideas, like, to the script. The baroscope's a really fun bit of kit. It's like this weird little snoot of a lens that lets you shoot things really close up, um, but with quite a generous um, depth of field, and basically it makes things look really large. We had the, um, the, the, the weeping angel, so we wanted to make eyes a motif of the episode, and the boroscope's really great because we can sort of do these big mad push-ins on characters' eyes, and, but there's also so many beautiful props in uh, Jericho's basement that I just couldn't resist uh, playing with the boroscope and shooting the EEG machine and all this old analog uh, lab equipment that he has. It's just really sexy. The angel has the TARDIS. So with episode four, we wanted that hammer horror film vibe. Hammer horror with weeping angels is how I kind of talked about it. Jamie's such an amazing director that once you say that to him, he's like, yep, got it. Don't look at it, don't look at it. In Jericho's set, it's great because lots of kind of shapes and things to shoot through, which kind of leans into the horror of that episode a little bit more. Wonky floorboards above because it's meant to be a basement, which are, which was great fun because we were able to have shadows of the of the angels moving above, and things like light bulbs on on um, on sort of loose string dangling down, which I thought were great fun because you could see an angel as if it's just moved. 
You are observed. And that is my power over you. With somebody like Jamie, he's the full package because he's so visual, but he also understands humor. I had a mate who had one of these. I think his was a bit bigger, actually. Shut up. He has a lot of energy in his camera work, and he loves genre, so he loves sci-fi, he loves horror films, and he really gets to the heart of any story. Don't forget to click below and subscribe to the official Doctor Who YouTube channel.